Hello, everybody. Hi, Bonnet Heads. I'm Pamela Bob, creator of Living on a Prairie, along with our French ambassador, Alison Arngram, and the guy who puts wild in wilder, <laughs> yeah, <right>. Dean Butler. <laughs> Thank you, Pamela. Had to do it. Had to do it. Uh, how are you guys? Good. How are uh, you doing this morning yeah, in, I mean, in New York? Good. I have to tell you uh, uh, a, a recent development that's happened which is I posted um, a clip from one of our previous episodes about how the two of you are um, gay idols, icons. Uh, Allison, you're a gay icon. Dean, you're a gay I dream am. for many. This is, but the feedback I'm getting, and this is new information for me, you guys, is that Jonathan Garvey is the one to look out for. He was the one that people had a thing for I, I don't know how i never knew this before why i never saw it but now i do my eyes are wide open wow. did you guys know i, I didn't know knew this you I, did. I, you knew I, it? I actually knew this oh my gosh where was i what so, planet i'm am sorry I on? Mer merlin olson merlin merlin Yes, legend beloved. in the I mean, well, it, it beloved. In Merlin the was such a, such a great guy. I mean, Merlin was such a wonderful man. You know, uh, my and wife Catherine, who across. worked with him and, and Father Murphy and loved him, just loved him. And that came across to everyone who was romantically yeah. attracted, male or female, because male or female, I was that's right. To, uh, some gentlemen there who uh, is. call themselves bears, they, they, who like, <laughs> you know. Yes. Yeah. Fellas, they dig. And I said, oh, so is is Mr. Edwards perhaps popular? They said, oh, it's rough and tumble. But, well, Jonathan Garvey, so oh, sweet, yeah. so kind, such a gentle giant, so wow. handsome, so strong, yet such a sweet, loving, gentle presence. And I went, well, d d well of course. And I know it's so obvious. I don't know what planet I've been living on. But what, every time I think, OK, I've got it. I'm I'm a I know everything. Something else happens. So what's I don't know. so what's obvious about I'm curious. What's obvious? Well, it, like Allison says, like he's like the ultimate bear. He's okay. like the strong, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. like you know, and that teddy bear. That. Know, yeah, right, bear. Right. Yes, a, a big cuddly, like beautiful <laughs> uh, teddy bear. Yeah. So that's okay. a demographic I was ignoring all of these years. I apologize, to everybody. <laughs> oh well, don't, don't you shouldn't apologize. It, I mean, the, it I just tells you there are endless the there are endless surprises that that I know that you know that come out of this. It's uh, it, it, it's remarkable. I mean, after fifty years, you know, stuff stuff just bubbles to the surface slowly. Oh, I, I mean, know. Fifty it's years, really slow crazy. bubble. Mister, Mr. Mister, also the fan club. There, the kind you know of, what else? Uh, there's also There's a Doc Baker fan the club. Is there yeah, really? Doc, yeah, Doc, Doc Baker. Baker. There, that was a big shocker for me too. I was like, okay, let's 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 do it. I'm here for it. <laughs> Kevin had a Kevin had a great voice. You know, I just oh, think yeah. that, that, Kevin's mm -hmm. voice just was amazing. And you know, but you know, if you're if you're if you get sick in Walnut Grove, Doc Baker's really sick. Doc Baker's not the guy you want to see coming up the up the drive. Yeah. He did not have a great success record healing people that really had health problems. <laughs> but that's part of the drama. <laughs> Uh, but there were a lot of miraculous healings on, yeah. the, happening on this. Yes. Thank so. heaven. Yes. Otherwise, we, yes. yeah, what would we have done? Because Doc yes. Baker was not didn't have a lot of access to the technology we take no, for right. granted today. Of course. of course. Although he was pretty modern thinking, and I mean, he'd refer you to the big city because sure. he was up on recent technology. I don't know. I give credit to Doc Baker. No, oh, I think I Doc think Baker was, was on it. great. No, he was great. Great bedside manner. I mean, Doc Baker yes, had a wonderful yes. vibe. Yeah, exactly. If he was coming to see your sick, you knew he was going to do his best. He just you had That's to wonder right. if his best was going to be good enough. Right, That's right, all. right. Yeah, right. Well, I guess in eighteen seventy-five or whatever, he yeah, was as good as it yeah. might get. Yeah, in an old state of the dog. art at the time. Yes. yes, exactly. Yeah, chicken wire, gangrene leg, <laughs> miracle, miracle. <laughs> There's no penicillin. <laughs> yeah. Miracle. Just anyway, drain it. Yeah. Uh, how how are you guys, Allison? You're still in. Are you still in France? I'm I'm showing this off. This is I got this uh, recently from a wonderful wonderful fan. Gave me this. Uh, Vincent gave me this, and I think all of us from the show should be getting these. What is it? Uh, it's the gold medal, medal d'or, uh, for 50 years of excellence. <gasps> Grand Prix, oh. Dex, grand prize for 50 years of excellence, gold medal. 
Lovely. And, uh, and on the back saying happy 50th and everything from Vincent and Fred. But I now, people say, so you had a show that was a hit and it's still a hit 50 years later. What do you want? A medal? And, I have <laughs> and you got one. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's really great. And Dean, what about you? You know, it's 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 media day in uh, in Simi Valley. So, yeah. you know, yesterday, Good Morning America was on location. Oh, good. You know, so so, but okay, I can't. I'm sort of tipping that. Look, we're we're recording this early because Allison's in France, but she's actually going to be on Good Morning America okay. then. So, you know, we're doing a little trickery here. But today, oh, great. when this releases, it is media day. So well, we're we'll going to be a little busy during the yeah, event, yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so a little, a little. Uh, but it's been it's oh, been a wild yeah, right week setting up sets and I'm, I'm, all of that. Yeah, I'm throwing this in because it's a week of so the event, you know, is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and of course we're going to be working Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, leading up to it with all the yeah. stuff in the press, and then just to be crazy, Monday and Tuesday, I'm actually going to come and do my French comedy review in LA at the Sierra Madre Theater over in Sierra Madre. After, right. After the weekend, not yeah, before the weekend. I'll the Monday be, and Tuesday after. I won't be tired. No. I, I oh, think so, that is, I, I have to say, I have to say, we had an event like last year where, Allison, you had right. been in France on a trip and you came home and 24 hours later you were on another plane to the Midwest and you got so yep. sick on that trip. I caught Everything. I actually had oh. two different things going because there was like an intestinal um, virus Ugh. as well as the respiratory virus. I actually had like multiple things happening. I Ugh. made my first trip to an emergency room. It was very exciting. <laughs> I'm one of these people, and it's probably why I'm so like cavalier about stuff. I've never been in the hospital. I'm stupid healthy. I have my shots and have the immune system of doom. But when I do get sick, I, and I, I actually I got dehydrated, and they actually did have to pack yeah. me off to the emergency yeah. room for yeah. the rest of the day. There was so not pretty. But yes, I was. I fight, but I guess I had been on so many planes. I was exposed to every micro yes. known Ugh. to science, and uh -huh. I caught like two or three of them. So yeah, so <laughs> after after traveling home, media day, three days of being surrounded by thousands and thousands of people, you're going to go to Sierra Madre and wind it up one more time to do two nights of uh, confessions of how, how do you pronounce it in French? Oh. A totally new show. This one is, oh. is called Nelly Olson Flamme les années 80, which, because um, we had the French version of Confessions of a Prairie Bitch, this is Nelly Olson sets fire to the 80s. <laughs> and it's a wonderfully <laughs> so cuckoo review of 80s nostalgia music game show. There's like game show parodies. Oh, fun. It's bonkers and it's all in French. Oh, wow. I, I think that's I think that's so brave of you to do that. It just shows what an active mind you have, that you are prepared to commit all of this to memory. And I guess you probably at this point, maybe you didn't speak French before you started all this, but you certainly speak French now. Or do you? Oui, je, je parle maintenant. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oui, and je yeah, fais yeah. le spectacle en français. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the le troisième spectacle en fait maintenant. <laughs> but uh, now we're it's the first time we brought it to America. We were like, is that going to work? We don't know. We're inviting every French speaker in LA, any French groups, associated schools, any Americans who speak French. Are you got anybody from right. Montreal in town? Well, we do. A few oh, people okay. from Montreal who will be in town. Yeah. What so well, you'll have out? another another packed house. You packed it for two it's weekends so when you did it. Earlier in the year, okay. you will pack it again in French. How that's many days that's what you, I'm thinking. How many days do you have? Uh, when do you arrive back from France? And then when does media Monday day? Night. How many? Oh, so you have two days. Monday three, night. Three. And we have interviews on Tuesday and some oh. stuff on Wednesday. And then all hell breaks loose on Thursday. Yeah. That's how, that's, that's that's how you roll. Okay. That's, that's how, how you roll. Take that vitamin C <laughs> and vitamin yeah, yeah. D yeah. and all that good stuff. Yeah. I the Wednesday after I'm going to stay in bed and order a pizza. Yeah, very good. Yes, I think you should absolutely do yeah, that. That's, yeah, yeah. I'm just a carb. Make it yeah. carb carb Wednesday. <laughs> just dedicate yes. it. And cheese, a lot of cheese. yeah, yes, <laughs> all of that good stuff. Good. Um, <laughs> now, uh, uh, Dean and Allison, have you have you guys noticed that the cast? It's kind of like you're getting older and younger at yeah. the same time. It's is true. that how you feel about it? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, it's we great. It it is great. It's it's totally great. And it's just sort of happened I mean it it began about I want to say about five years ago and it's been 
it's been uh, coming along. You know, recently we were up in Bakersfield and met Jennifer Jennifer Donati or Jennifer Coleman Donati approached our group at a Comic Con in Bakersfield with pictures of herself <gasps> as Baby oh my Rose. Gosh. And reintroduced herself to the cast, and we were all flat. I mean, she she walked up to me sitting at a table and opened this book and said, <laughs> "Hi, I'm your daughter." And I'm thinking, "Wait a minute, I've always been really careful in my life. I'm your daughter." That that sort of flipped me out. Um, but though, but then she had the pictures, and she showed it. Was like, "Oh my God, look at you!" And so she's joined us. And then in December. We had one of the we what was it was it Jennifer or Michelle Allison who joined us in Texas? I can't, I can't keep track, but the, we have all Jennifer. all the roses. So the roses, yeah, we have a bouquet of roses that are joined that have joined us, and they are going to be with us uh, in in Simi Valley. And of course, we have we have another who is our guest today. And let's yeah. let's sort of we're setting that up. To, uh, to introduce but our we, guest today. We, we love it because right we now have young, pretty, beautiful people. Yeah. I mean, shall we say eye candy? They're more than that, but they are cute. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, They've made us young younger as a there. group. It, yeah. Fires, it fires it up. It's given us new inspiration and energy having these really cool, lovely, adorable young people join our little club. That's great. That's a wild story, by the way, that that's how they found it. So there had been no contact this whole time from the series. Was, I mean, they were babies, I suppose. No, no, toddlers. exactly. And just like wow. Je Je Jennifer Donati at, and her husband, Eli, and their children just showed up at the table wow. and introduced themselves. And it was like. Oh now, my God! And Jennifer and Eli are helping enormously with the 50th yeah. and see me. They're that's all right. over it. Yeah, I mean, Eli, Eli is restoring a beautiful gift that Michael received from the cast in 1976. I won't tell you what it is, but he is restoring that, and it will be on display at our fan experience in Simi Valley. It's uh, and our guest has had something to do with that too. So I think we need to we need to okay. bring her in. All right, here we go on today's show. Another baby makes three. We'll meet the youngest Ingalls daughter from the studios of UBN Go in Burbank, California. Visit simivalley.com presents a special event podcast. This is Little House 5450. <laughs> Fire in the fireplace. Eyes in the oven. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are so very grateful to visit simivalley.com for their commitment to present the Little House 50 for 50 podcast. This, what we're doing right here, uh, along with simivalley.com, we want to thank, we have a list of people, ready? Yeah, list of Allison, you have that list. You have that list. Allison, you want to say it? Uh, yeah. Wonderful friends at Cozy TV, who of course have been running the show. We love them. Yes. Rodex, and of course, Modern Prairie, my arch nemesis, Melissa Gilbert's fabulous company. Price Ford, the city of Simi Valley, of course, and Adventist Health Simi Valley. Thank you. All oh, thank you, thank you for your support of the event of the fifty yes. fifty podcast. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. Let's get to it. Let's meet today's guest, Allison and Dean. I will give it to you. What do you have to say about today's guest? Do you want Do you want to start, Allison, or should I start? I, I, I can hope. start. You, you, know, I you, you, you can start. You can yeah. Start. Okay. So you you had a you had well, although it should be ladies <laughs> first, but I'll I'll jump in here. Um, you know, when we when we first met her, we had not seen her in a lot of years. And the last time we had seen her, she was this little blonde moppet uh, mm -hmm. with her sister. The and cutest. she was she was adorable then. And then I think what was in I want to say it was in Walnut Grove. We were going to Walnut Grove to do an race event. track. Race track. Oh, was, race it the, track? was it the race track? OK, but we went to the race track. but uh, in walked this beautiful, blonde, grown-up person with this just oh. light of sweetness and warmth about them that was mm. just so engaging. And we find out that this is baby Grace. And I was just knocked out by her. And there, we're going to talk about things that I, you know, I have memories of watching her feel observations of her she's doing things on the road during our events and I, I think she's just extraordinary with fans i'm just so delighted that she has become part an active part again of the little house family uh because she just makes a huge contribution 
Allison, what do you, you know, what's your take here? Well, it seems like also all of our, our babies from the show all grew up to be so remarkably tall and stunning and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like just like a wild thing. Like, hey, you're gonna, why are you bigger than everyone? Um, yeah, she is just delightful. I mean, and so smart and so smart and then has turned out to be a brilliant writer yeah. she's fantastic at the events it's yeah. like what does she not do um yeah she's amazing okay well she was introduced in season five's episode a most precious gift oh it's so cute i can't stand it she's half of the cutest set of twins ever to Grace Television. We all fell in love with her as baby Grace. Please say hello to Wendy Lou Lee. Welcome. <laughs> you really were the cutest. You really, truly, you and your sister were just the cutest little babies and little kids ever. Well, thank you. <laughs> I mean, How old were you when, yeah. when you guys joined the show? Well, I'm not one to like um, correct you, Pamela, but oh, no. it actually wasn't us on a most precious gift. That was oh, oh the character was introduced, but it wasn't you. Yes, that Got was it. a little boy. Um, actually, a little boy. Uh, okay. No, these our are first, important facts. Yes. Our first episode, we are about eight months old and it was, um, as long as we're together when, you know, family <gasps> moves to Winoka. So that is our first episode. Well, I was about to say, I know, I know you guys were there as babies cause you look at, you're one of those, <laughs> you guys are those people who look exactly the same, no matter what <laughs> it's like, you can tell it's you, you know, there are some people, myself included, like they look totally different at different stages of life, but you you know it's you, even when you're an infant. And again, you guys were just so adorable and, and charming. And uh, really, there was something quite special about the two of you on that show. There really was. I, I, wait a minute, I knew that there was a story, uh, Wendy, about this, as I, you told it before, about this this initial introduction of Grace not being a little girl. But amazingly, that little boy as the little girl looks a great deal like you. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's it's sort of amazing what uh, the, the resemblance. And then, then Michael finds, so the baby was introduced and it was what, the next season? Was it, was, there wasn't, it was later in season five that the introduction no. happened. That baby Grace is actually born at the end of season four okay. and they hadn't found us yet. And so okay. they had just a couple of months before they started filming season five to find okay. us. So okay. it oh, was wow. pretty much a last minute ditch effort to find baby Grace. <laughs> so how did they find you? What's, what's the audition story? <laughs> yeah. yeah, my, we're not from an acting family. Um, but my grandmother was friends with Kent and Sue. And so they were playing cards one day and <sighs> You know, talking about Little House, because what else do you talk about in the, in the late 70s? And um, my mom was kind of, I mean, my grandma was kind of like a groupie, you know, always like, what's going on? And da, da, da. And so then it was like, we can't find a baby Grace. It was like, there's no blonde hair twins. <gasps> and so, of course, my grandma, you know, freaks out and is like, what do you, what do you use my granddaughters? And so we, you know, a picture was shown to Michael and they said, he said, bring them in. And... Um, we literally just walked in and my mom put us down on the floor and Michael got on the floor with us. And my mom said it took about two or three minutes and he just looked up to her and just said, I think these are my girls. And, and my mom, I think she kind of thought maybe we were going to be extras for a season or two, you know, like a, you know, an episode or two, and then realizes like, <laughs> I think this is like for real, you know? So it. It was, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Was, well, um, the two of you were wow. so lovely on the show. There was just a light about around both of you, mm -hmm. you know? There really was. It really came through also. It just did. I We loved baby Grace. Do you have any, I, you were so little, but do you have memories of being on the show? A couple. Um, I will say season eight, we remember a lot more. Um, yeah. The Christmas episode, like I remember mm. the snow falling and we actually like oh. gathered some of it and put it in a box and took it home with us. And we Aww. remember that. 
and we fought over who got to lick that candy cane and I did not win. Um, <laughs> things like that. Uh, the other episode we really remember is, is Sunshine, Days of Sorrow. Yes. Um, running away from the house with Laura. Like that was a okay. huge episode for us. Like I remember Michael saying, keep running, don't look back. And, you know, that's a big job for a, you know, four-year-old to uh, follow the, those Wendy, I, I literally have written down in my notes, like, what was it? That moment where she's having a total mental breakdown and poor baby Grace just has to turn around and run in the wild prairie by herself. Where did she go? How far did she run? But that must have been really, I mean, you know, like toddler on the prairie. Watch out, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're just going to go, you know, find Pa or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always felt so bad for baby Grace in that moment. That's funny. <laughs> did you have a uh, did you have a favorite actor that you to, to work with? Well, I, I'm sure it was me. I, I'm just going to yeah. say. It was I'm asking me. that with a wink, wink, yeah, yeah. you know. Well, yeah. you know, you did tell us that Three Bears story. Yeah, which well, was that's what I'm saying. That was a winner. Episode yeah, ever. Yeah. I mean, that was yeah. just a scene just oh, like no other. <laughs> I, you know, I always remember about that day that, you know, and Michael was so good with the kids. I mean, you're going to, mm. there's another story that you have about Michael and feeding you. But with that day, we were going to uh, shoot the three bears and Michael came down to the stage. He wasn't on the stage that day. Look at that and, little face. And he said, you know, he, he said, do you need some help telling the story to get them to react? And, you know, I thought, no, I got this. I, I can do this. This is this is not a problem. I'm not completely obtuse with small children. I, you know, so I said, <laughs> no, I, I got it. And he, he, you know, he stepped back and, and, you know, we, we did it. And now was it you or Brenda? It was actually Brenda. Okay. All right. Very good. I mean, it was just, you know, so much, so much fun. And um, I mean, you, the two of you were just so, so beautiful. I mean, you have a, you have a, you've told over the oh, years, a makes. wonderful story about the interaction you had with, I mean, you had many interactions with Michael, but there's a story, there's a story about, and we've got pictures of it, where Michael's having to do some feeding and it's not going well. And tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good scene. Well, you know, um, most of the time people ask this question of like, how did they get you to cry? Were you just having a bad day? And it was like, <laughs> no, actually this was all, in the plan and i tell people like michael was brilliant and he's not going to put something on camera that he didn't want you know like if if we were in a bad mood and he didn't want it he would have cut the scene you know so i think some people just think um you know the day went bad or something but this was all in the script to you know really show that the men were not capable of taking care of the children and so um they did put pepper in the oatmeal so that I would not want to eat, eat from Pa, and it worked very well. Um, and I will say that I do think that that scene could have been a little shorter because it went on and on and on. But that is a scene that changed our um, future because that's what gave us our contract because we officially wow. said the word no on right. screen right. and before that we were just extras uh day pay you know per diem whatever and um so that was actually a turning point for us where we all of a sudden our names are in the credits and we actually have a contract and we wow. actually get you know royalties for a season and a bit because of that episode so so, I, I'm so I'm sorry. So what did he Garbo do? Speaks. Tell the story. Did you the tell the story? Have I, it's Garbo speaks. You said no, and that was it. Then you were a real employee, right? A real actress at that point. No, Easily, yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But so, but so wow. no. It was. What did he do to the? It was oatmeal, right? You're being. So they how put did, pepper in it. Yeah. Put so pepper what, in the oatmeal. Yeah. Right. I mean, a child is like, help. what are you doing to me? You know, and um, I never ate from Pa again. And actually, <laughs> a few episodes later, there's an episode where he's trying to feed me eggs. And I have not overcome that fear. Um, oh, no. Yeah. And it's a, it's a much more sweet um, scene. 
But you can tell baby Grace does not trust Pa when it comes to any kind of food in the bowl. <laughs> had you actually tasted the oatmeal with the pepper in it or had you you saw them put it in so you knew it was in Oh, there? no, I think I I think I actually ate it and Taste that's it. Because oh. really, how can you explain to a three year old, hey, there's pepper in this. So you might not want it. I mean, totally. No. So they totally like tricked me. And then I was <laughs> like, get away from me. <laughs> Showbiz now, is brutal, folks. Brutal. There's not a lot of pepper in this. Now, do you eat pepper today? Yes, and oatmeal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, see, so you weren't permanently damaged by this scene. That's that's important to know. No, and they did ask my mom permission, and she was like, oh, yeah. And, you know, you hear stories of children that are pinched, or and it was like, pepper is pepper's pepper. It's It's... I, I was not, I was yeah. not uh, damaged. Yes. <laughs> Allison, did you ever work with Wendy and Brenda? Did you ever have it? I mean, how would Nellie have gotten close to these girls? But I'm just curious. You didn't really, did you? I would have called like taking care of babies or something. No. Um, <laughs> I do remember, because that's right. It was when Nellie cut. It was when we were shooting at Paramount, because we're now in the new towns. So we're in the Western set there. And then that's when suddenly they were carting around these blonde babies. Um, so no, I didn't get to like have seen, to do, but um you were adorable. And then there were times in church and everything. So I, I always thought you guys were like really, really cute and very, and as I say, well behaved. I mean, you were being terribly professional for toddlers, you know, and when it was time to do the thing and sit still and look around and be a toddler and be a TV toddler, you were able to do this. And that's the thing with child actors. You know, there's so many abuses, but there's also, there's a personality in a person mm -hmm. that can do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And when children don't have that, personality don't want to be there and aren't right. into it it's like man don't do that there are humans who are naturally inclined and are sort of social right. Right. that can talk to strangers and be around people and be on a set and it doesn't freak them out and that was apparently you guys yeah and then I was, I, oh i'm sorry oh go ahead go ahead wendy i was gonna say you know there's something about being a twin that and, and i also have an older sister so an only child is a lot i mean you are very coddled. And when you're a twin, you are never coddled. And you are handed to all kinds of people because <laughs> parents can't handle all of you. You know what I mean? So I think there's something about twins, too, where you're just never the center of attention. So it's like, okay. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Well, but, no, um, it, it does. I was going to say you got lots of attention. So you may not have been oohed and odd over by, by Nellie because Nellie wouldn't really, you know, descend to that but melissa gilbert absolutely adored the two of you i mean i just anytime there was a small child or a, an animal or anything on the stage melissa was Aww. was right there and he, when here's a nice picture of of yeah. melissa holding one of you i don't know which of you it is but she's holding one of you yeah uh, do you have any recollections about the interactions with melissa well i think it if I think beyond um, Karen and Mike, I mean, Melissa was always carting us around and Ma just seems to always, you know, pawn Grace off on Laura. And so <laughs> yes. totally, um, she she's she tells a story. She used to like sneak into our dressing room and she would play with us and she like taught us our first word or something. So my mom just remembers Melissa always being around and Melissa's still like that. She loves children, animals, yeah. anything that she can get yeah. her hands on. She's, she's just, <laughs> she's like that. Yeah. She, but no, Melissa was is. amazing. I would say like those three, Melissa, Karen and Mike. I mean, besides that, who are we even in a scene with? I mean, yeah. And I remember seeing a scene recently where it's you and Ma and you're, you know, you're in the little house and you obviously just started talking to her clearly off script. Right. You know, you probably didn't have anything to say in that scene. And she was just going along with, you know, it was so lovely seeing her just go along with it. Like how a mother would talk to their kid while they're busy getting ready or cooking or, you know, doing whatever. And it was um, I love those moments where the kid is actually doing something for real that's not in the script mm -hmm. and the adults just roll with it. It's so lovely. Well, yeah, I think that Michael really loved to do that and like let it play out and see what happens. And a lot of times yes. he kept it. And it was like, yeah. 
it showed like the reality of like what a family yes. is like. It's not all staged because you can't really make a three-year-old um, be that convincing, you know, in, in the normal day-to-day -day what a family looks like, you know, so. Can I ask you one question about that when baby Carrie turns and runs and flees into the prairie um, when Melissa has her sort of breakdown, do they, do they prep you as to what is about to happen? Like, do, did you know like she's going to be very emotional and she might be screaming and crying and that's okay and you just need to turn and run when that happens or are you going in sort of blind and then Michael yells you know run <laughs> well Pam I don't know if we saw the hystericalness um so I see hot, you know so we're walking they're holding her hand I, it's amazing that I I know this even though I was you know four but I'm I don't remember her being hysterical, so I don't yeah. think we're actually there for that part of it. We probably walked up holding her hand and she's talking and they cut it and they don't show her reaction. And then they say, as soon as this happens, you're just going to turn and run and you're going to run as far as you can and you're not going to look back. And obviously, you know, Michael is yelling, screaming, keep running, don't look back. So, you know, they <laughs> down his so we just have to keep doing what he's telling us to do in the exact right. moment. But we are... Um, we knew how to follow directions. I will say mm. there's one one story where um, we were in the back bedroom. Me and Michael were in the back bedroom and um, he was saying, okay, so this is what I'm gonna have you do. And I looked at him and I said, no way, Jose. And, um, <laughs> and I, my mom said that the camera guys were like, oh, uh, she just said no to Michael Landon, you know? So um, we can get feisty on the scene. You know, we can have like a little spark of, uh, I don't want to do what you're telling me to do. Sure. You know? so. Well, the, like the, like every three year old, you're learning to assert yourself, and you know you don't know who you're really saying that to. You're just you're going to say no because you can. Exactly. And yeah. No. No. Good for you. Good for you. But the Good naturalism of it that's yeah. that's the thing that works. And uh, I and I'm please and this is a thing that often happens in movies and film, and it's a good thing when they do it. Where we sometimes see small children in scary situations, dangerous situations. Often what they do if they're smart, they're never actually there. It's a trick of the camera. We see a fire, a terrible thing, someone screaming, crying, having a breakdown, and the poor child, the poor child, yeah, well, that was shot a different day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the child is just going, oh, awesome, I'm running. And they're, they're not exposed to the scary part of the emotional part. It's all shot separately, which is very clever and spares from three-year-olds from yeah. being overly traumatized. Although yeah, I will yeah. say is that Baby Grace did have a concerned look on her face when she looked up at, yeah. at Laura yeah. and was like, yeah. hmm. So there must have been some kind of instruction or mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. you know, give her that. You did it well. Perfect look. <laughs> you, sur you, sur you survived it all, Wendy. Yes. I, we want to talk about your life after Little House, but we need to take a quick break right now. Simi Valley, California invites you to see the place where it all began this March at the Little House on the Prairie 50th anniversary. Discover our stories from presidents to pioneers. Visit iconic locations like the Reagan Library and more. Make your own memories at visitsimivalley.com. I have to tell you, the world is descending on Simi Valley this weekend. So you have the opportunity to visit ah, Simi Valley. Crazy. Now that we have that musical interlude, uh, what what did you do um, after Little House? What what happened to you guys? Yeah, well, Little House ended. Um, we did one commercial, and then we went to kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> so I say we graduated from acting and went to kindergarten. Um, we just grew up as normal. A perfect kids. evolution, by the way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We moved away from Southern California. And moved to the Central Coast, um, a little tiny town called Atascadero, and we were normal kids, and nobody knew anything about yeah. that. So <laughs> they had normal lives. Yeah. Yeah. No. Did, good was for... there any desire to try and do it again, or what? It, it was it was a thing. It was done, and it was great, and it's over. Um, 
it was done. I think mostly yeah. because I have three sisters. So four kids, my mom was just <gasps> hands full. Oh yeah. And so it wasn't really even a possibility. Um, and we lived so far away that that didn't happen, but we did like, you know, every talent show, every church musical, every, you know, thing that, but, but, you know, small town stuff here, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we just moved on. Yeah, I think that's, I think it's great that yeah. you and your sister were allowed to grow up as, as children in a, in a normal environment where you're home and you go to school and you go to church and you have play dates and you have all that without all the pressure yeah. that not only falls on you or young, and we have so many people we could talk to about, I mean, Allison among them, um, of child, child actors it's a that's a tough road to hoe. I mean, I think it's to come out of that unscathed is not easy for for you. And that says a lot about your mom and, you know, the yes. energy that she that she had around the two of you. No, I know you guys tell stories about your mom and, you know, how she, how she was and is. But your mom's a lovely person. And, you know, they're just they're, it's very obvious that this is someone who has a good head on her shoulders and she loves you and she's caring for you. And although she gave you, I guess, a lot of independence, like, you know, you're, you've always, you've told stories about how your mom sort of wanted you to take care of things yourself. That's my recollection. Right. Yeah. My mom is very much a like pull up your bootstraps kind of mom, like, all right, like go learn it, do it on your own. Like you're going to be okay, but it's going to be hard sometimes, you know? So mm -hmm. she's not afraid of um, any of that. And she's kind of taught us to be very strong women, all four of us girls. Um, yeah. But she, she knew that um, this was going to be a better life for us yeah. and yeah. for her, because really she was like, practically speaking, this is going to be almost impossible. So yeah. Um, yeah. Well, her, 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 you did one commercial, one commercial after a little, and you said you only one, but this, the, the way things were on a set, I mean, it wasn't Little House and it wasn't Michael Landon and it wasn't done like the way we did things in the Prairie. It was like a regular set. And her reaction to seeing how children are generally treated on a set yeah. was like, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We had really great memories of that day because we had these cute little cowgirl outfits and it was like, this is so awesome. And my mom was like, this is so not okay. Like, we are not doing this again. And I think we Good did- for her that. though. And she just said, uh, we're done. Hang up the hat. We don't need <laughs> our agent anymore. Like, ugh. If it's going to be like this, then I don't think this is for us. So good for her, though, because there are, uh, you know, that there's so many child actors who are doing it because their parents are living vicariously through them. No question. Not because the child actually wanted or whether this is actually good for the child. Um, and that's just a recipe for disaster. So kudos to your mother for knowing the right thing to do for her kiddos. I'm yeah, curious. I oh, mm -hmm. go ahead, Wendy. You had something to say about that. Oh, no, no, I'm good. So I'm just wondering when you when you decided, what was that moment when you decided that maybe I want to step back into my little house family? How did that Yeah, and happen? how long had it been since you seen you had seen everyone? Oh, 23 years. Oh, wow. Um, we got oh, an invitation God. to go to the racetrack, and we had not seen them since we were five. Uh, no, nobody. Um, we saw Michael when we were in like 12 years old. We went on the set of Highway to Heaven for an hour. Oh, wow. But other than that, we hadn't seen anyone. And we wow. showed up. I was like seven months pregnant. I was like, this is the worst time you never. You say I was glowing. It was probably because I, I was not comfortable in my skin that day. I'll, that's what I remember. And thinking, why is this happening right now? You know, um, I get we, it. Been there. We walked, yeah, we walked <laughs> in, and the first thing I remember is Allison, and she had a tie dye tank top on and a canvas hat, and she stood up and she said, Oh my goodness, baby Grace is having a baby. And I thought, Oh my gosh, I think that's Nellie Olson because her voice was exactly the same. <laughs> Tell and so that is really what started it all. And I remember right after at the end of the racetrack, Allison and Bob came up and they said, Hey, you know. You know, after you have this kid, um, 
you guys want to come on the road? Because I think baby Grace, everyone would like to meet baby Grace. And we were like, are you kidding me? And about six months later, eight months later, we did our first event in Tombstones, Arizona. That's at that what it was. Film festival, and that was our right. first event we'd ever done. And right. I've been doing it ever since. So it's been about 19 years. Wow. Um, of course, maybe one every year or so. Mm -hmm. But um, I've kind of been back in it now for a long time. Uh, and it's been the best, most amazing thing ever. So you are you make such a what really? you and jennifer and now the stefan twins coming back into it you make such a wonderful contribution to the energy and it's great to see the eyes of people who come to visit us look at you and look at your pictures and see what a lovely person you've become and it, it's you know it, it's just it's a gift for all of us to, to have and also because you look the same. Yeah, you, I mean, of you. course, <laughs> you're a mature, beautiful woman. But, you know, there are some adults who look exactly like how they looked when they were babies. And I think that's also for the fans part of the um, connection with you is that when we see you, we know exactly who you are. Uh, and it's um, and really there was a special connection with the audience and baby grace there really was you guys were there was something about you guys yeah, there was just no. something about you well, well it made particularly you know, special like you're, you're brilliant when the two of, when you and your sister spoke i remember on the panel at tombstone right away you just both of you were marvelously well spoken said incredible they were like what like, baby baby grace is like really good on stage <laughs> what she did what, what is happening and everything you've been at just the stuff you've done your interaction with the fans and the things they ask you you're just you're really good at this at public mm. speaking and everything and now you're writing and you've just turned out to be this amazing amazing person and all the things that you've also overcome in adult life because like hello you do challenges a couple of things happened yeah so can we talk about that i well we know you are a, a person of faith and your beautiful, beautiful book, Prairie Devotional. Can you tell us a little about what led you to write that? Oh boy, um, I it's actually, a story. yeah, I, I had brain surgery, and after brain surgery, I honestly, I needed something to help me recover, and yeah. so this was a big, a big part of that, and um, I felt like I had a story to share, and so there are lots of um, little stories in my devotional about um, recovering and fear and all those things that happen when you go through something that's uh, very unexpected. And so, yeah, it's it's really taking quotes from the show and relating it to my life and how we all go through like ups and downs and heartache and, you know, all that stuff. So uh, I just have to say you said something that sort of catches everybody's ear oh you went through brain surgery you said i mean that's a big deal could you yeah. tell us about brain surgery your brain surgery what was going on there yeah well i i just started having symptoms really bad headaches dizziness confusion this was in 2015 and um, got a brain scan and needed a tumor removed. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, you know, it happens so fast and, um, there's, there's so many emotions that come with it. Um, but it, we all have those things, you know what I mean? Like we all have our own set of, of worries and hardships. And so this, this is really mine, but the cool thing is that this brain surgery, like the worst thing that could possibly happen to me really changed the trajectory of my life. And I, I am so different than I was before. Mm. <laughs> and it just in what way on a new path? Um, yeah, just realizing that I had like another chance to do yeah. Yeah. what yeah. I really wanted to do. And this was really when I, um, chose to start writing and just plunge into the little house world. And um, I don't know if I would be doing all this if it wouldn't have been for that. And I just see like 
there was a plan. Like I fully believe that like God used this brain tumor to totally change what I would be doing right now. So, um, yeah, I mean, I say it was like the worst thing that could ever happen, but literally maybe one of the best things that ever happened to me in my life. So I, I, uh, Wendy, I, we were all at the cherry blossom festival in Missouri where we're going to be a bunch of us will be again this spring. Um, and the book had just come out and I remember that the Reverend Inman there in, uh, in Marshfield invited you to share his pulpit on a Sunday and you got up and told your story about the writing of this book. And I have to say it was one of the most moving, powerful human explanations I'd ever heard of about faith and trust and optimism about the world. And your message just was so resonant to people in, in that space. I, I, I don't know if you remember, I mean, I, came up to you afterwards and just basically fell all over you and just saying mm. what 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 a beautiful message that was and you have such a wonderful story to tell because of your experience going through this cancer or this tumor experience that you can share with people to give people who are facing all kinds of challenges hope yeah. that mm -hmm. they can come out the other side of a challenge and in, in maybe better than they were before and that we can't get enough of that as people. Yeah, no, I do remember that Dean, because I was like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I could have had a better compliment from you. So <laughs> well, thank you. Well, you're, ju but you're just, you're just lovely. So, I mean, what, so you write the one book, the first book, and this is out and now red tail feathers comes. What was the yeah. inspiration for that? Well, red tail feathers was actually the book that I thought I was going to write first. It was really like my, story. Um, and I just wasn't, I don't think I was ready as a person to write it. And that's when the devotional just kind of got thrown in my lap and I thought, Oh my goodness, this is amazing. And so I, I really picked up the, my memoir after the devotional was done. And it's really just my story of finding grace in every chapter of your life. So no matter what your chapters are, like, I really firmly believe that there is a thread there is something that is going on through all those chapters it's just forming you and into the person yeah. you are meant to be and so um it goes from you know being on little house of the prairie all the way through so um yeah that just came out in august so i've been busy uh you're so and i just i love <laughs> how i love how little house on the prairie has been part of your healing journey it's just so it, it, you know, I, the older I get, the more I'm convinced that there are no coincidences in life. And uh, it just makes you think, huh, there must have been some sort of some sort of path, some sort of plan going on there. Uh, Wendy, you don't know this yet, but you are going to be asked to do a panel talking about your book along yes, with I others. Yes, I that. I saw oh, the schedule. Oh, perfect. So you do know. <laughs> Good. She's so, on it. I'm telling you she's yeah, on it. Yeah, so you are doing, we're asking you to do several panels talking about the process of of your book and and sharing that with our audience at uh, at the 50th. And you're going to do a wonderful job. And um, so excited. So have those books ready because you're going to get your opportunity to talk to people about them. I think they're going to love it. Well, oh, and you're leading the church service on Sunday morning by too. What she's doing. I just, I, I have to so inspire what you've done because, I mean, what you've given to fans, as I said, we have so many different fans and different types of fans all over the world, but we obviously have many, many, many fans who love Little House because it, it totally meshes with their faith, with their religious faith, and there really wasn't anybody from the show who was going to write. A devotion, a book that was directly spiritual in that way. And I know there were people who really wanted that. And you delivered that. You went, here it is. Here it is. And it's well done. And it's so good. And, and it's, it's very it inclusive. to so many different people. Yes. But it's, it, I've, it's I've, super yeah, inclusive. The number of people I know who read it who said, I didn't expect to feel included in this book. I didn't expect this book to relate no. to me. And that they did. And it's just amazing. And what you've done in how you went, then went out and said, well, now I need to learn how to write this other book. And you studied the mm -hmm. whole process of devotional writing. You did this, you did that. And 
I have been so inspired by your dedication and your hard work in becoming an author. I am, I bow down. I bow down to you. As a New York Times bestselling author, I bow down to you. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that's, that's nice. That's, that's pretty good. That's a nice statement. Good for you. <laughs> well, so you yes, have helped, you have helped me, Allison, too, just encouraging me. You've been such a cheerleader. So um, I I am forever in your debt. So, well, I, I'm also yes, you're you're you are going to be leading the service on Sunday morning. Is that correct? And you're going to have a special guest. As you know, well. all of a sudden they, there's this new thing where I like got to be you know, Reverend Alden here at the event. It's like it's a I lot know. of pressure, guys. Like it's a lot of pressure. Um, and yeah, the one thing I'm I'm always telling people is don't worry. It will be short and sweet because Reverend Alden's sermons were always short yeah. and sweet. I yeah. just learned yes. from the book, so. Yes. And, and again, and in, again, incredibly inclusive. And, and it is true. Is it true that Ketty Lester will be singing also during that service? Ah, wow amazing so you know if you don't if you don't want to come here me just come here ketty you know so. <laughs> totally. well, well and, and, and talk about a, a woman of spirit and faith i mean ketty just radiates uh, a, a warmth and a goodness about her that's that's just incredible and i think the two of you are going to be wonderful together Absolutely. during that uh, during that little short service we hope it's like a half an hour it is going to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> I, I've already said at 1045, we have to stop so people can get out and get in for Karen's yeah. thing that's coming up next. Correct. So don't worry, Dean. We've got it all planned out. Perfect. I will go over, I promise. <laughs> and it ain't her first said, time at the rodeo. Leave yeah. them wanting more. If Eddie wants to sing longer, I'm giving yeah. her the mic. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, so great. I I think we, we are in a situation where we have to run now, but the look, we'll see you over the weekend. You, you've just you've been awesome. We love you. I mean, you are just a light around everything that we do as a Little House family now, and, and thank you for bringing you. And you, Before we're done with this podcast, we have to have you come back, and we need to talk about you and your sister, and, you know, so we, we need to continue this story but right now you know we're, we're heading for see me right now and you're both going to be in see me right oh the two oh yes the two sisters will both be yeah. there yes brenda is so coming so to see me yes so right. she she's coming i convinced her to come yay she said if there's one event i'm going to come to what am i going to come to brent our wendy and i said you got to come to see me and so she's coming and um she doesn't do a lot of events but no that's great. The two that's of you are so going to be exciting. fantastic together because rarely have people seen you together. And that's a wonderful treat for for fans who love to know that they've sort of touched every aspect of this. I mean, it's great that you're both going to be there. Wendy, thank you thank for being you so here. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And we, again, please come back. Oh. And we'll see you and see me. I know. We'll see Yay. you so soon. <laughs> see you and see me. Okay, great. We're going to have to say, say goodbye and have a little break. Allison, hit it. Simi Valley. Simi Valley, California invites you to see the place where it all began this March at the Little House on the Prairie 50th anniversary. Discover our stories from presidents to pioneers. Visit iconic locations like the Reagan Library and more. Make your own memories at visitsimivalley.com. And we also want to thank Alexander GMC of Simi Valley, Golden State Water Company, Marketing Scape, Strath Strathern Historical Society, and WM, formerly Waste Management, the masters of a debris cleanup, and Vista at Simi Valley Assisted Living. Thank you all for your support of the Little House on the Prairie 50 for 50 podcast. Yes. <laughs> Do we have time for maybe a question sure. today? Sure. Yes. Let's okay. ask a question. Here we go. Here we go. Here are some listener questions. Uh, Matthew Schutz says, uh, he, he he wrote a question last time. He wrote a couple questions and they're good. Could Michael Landon make himself cry at the drop of a hat? His watering eyes make me tear up often. Yeah. I mean, Allison, he's, you probably saw this more than I did. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He had yeah. complete yeah. control of, of that. Guys. He he had a, a quivering chin on cue. He had a he had a special trigger, and the story the story goes. Um, and Allison, you may can confirm this. The story goes that 
he was so devastated by the loss of his friend Dan Blocker during the Bonanza mm. years that he used that memory of that loss as the trigger from that point forward in his career to to generate tears when he needed it. Dan Blocker meant that much to him, I'm and it was right there for Not him. surprised. They were so close. His son, Dirk Blocker, his son came on the show. His son, Dirk Blocker, was on the show, mm. and although it seemed artificial that he could do it so quickly there was clearly something organic and real happening Absolutely. when he did it so you're yes. like how is he doing that yeah. um, and we used to joke about how he had the lighting set so it would hit his chin <laughs> just so so every little quiver was like more visible <laughs> but i mean that was it and then the, it, at the other end he that laugh he could just rip that like no. <laughs> off no. at a second it was it was amazing amazing i always said he was I just really always said Michael Landon was really underrated. There were people like they said they thought Little House was a children's show. Oh, he was Little Joe from Bonanza. Oh, he's cute. Ha ha ha. But when you actually watch the thing and see what he's doing, we're like, why did this not? Ma- why did he not have a truckload of Emmys? What is going I, on it, here? It makes the no man was sense. Growing. Yeah, it makes no sense. And again, it, there are some people that can you know cry on cue and it's you can tell there's a phoniness to it i mean the tears might be coming out it's but a, there's a sense of phoniness and he was not one of those people you could be purely nope. authentic even though he could whip it up on cue yep. Zian, did he tell you that or did you find that out from i think somebody? I, I i think that was one of the you know in the lore of michael that's one of those things that huh. uh, that came out no he did not i i think he kept that yeah. Sort of a secret. Oh, he, he was, you know, you don't necessarily share that with people. Right, exactly. But it, but it was written about. And look, someone may jump huh. up and dispute that and say, and look, there are people who know so much about Michael. They may say, oh, no, no, that's not it. It's this. But that's what I read. And it made total sense to me. Yeah. Of so uh, given what he the nature so of that attached. relationship was. Imagine, you really, I mean, you know, he's buried near Lauren Green, his TV father. Hmm. He's oh, wow. not. He's, he's at the same cemetery. He has there's a whole glass door, like a room thing. Is mm-hmm. but Lauren Green. I mean, he's not 15 feet from Lauren Green. He's yeah, TV off. Yeah. I mean, he was extremely yeah. emotionally attached to Bonanza. I mean, that was yeah, the whole crew came from Bonanza, the Little House. So to think that it had to do with his relationship with Dan Blocker is not a mm. surprise. That that mm. was very believable. That's fascinating. Okay, I'm going to do one more. It's really quick. Okay. Either it's her, she's either Marisa or Marissa Rippy ass. Hello, she says. I'm loving the podcast. Thank you. I've been rewatching Little House episodes on Peacock. Does anyone know who the actor is that's always eating at Nellie's? Well, yes, we do. Considering how many times at the beginning he was abused by Nellie, the guy was probably their most loyal customer. <laughs> yeah. My favorite victim. My my favorite victim and loyal customer, Mr. Dan McBride. Dan McBride for the win. I think we knew his name. It was a little vague. I believe we think his name was Henry Riley on the show. Mm. It's all a little boring. He was mostly just the guy who got hit in the face with a chicken yes. is who he or is. The, or the or bread. Or the pancakes. Right. Or, or the bread. Or And um, we didn't know where he was for a while. And then he hit me up on Facebook. And it was like, you probably don't remember me. And I said, I never forget a man who I hit in the face with a chicken. <laughs> yes. Of course, I know who you are. Yes, and and, um, and he joined us for the cast interviews, also with you guys that you guys both yes, were. Yes. You all were so in many, over COVID on my books. little channel. And he's very funny. He's very silly. We always get together. We get together. We always have some rubber chickens and try to at least <laughs> one point have me throw one at him when we can, you know. And um, so yes, he's wonderfully silly. He did several other films and then he retired and went back to teaching. He mm. teaches um, health mm. and science at the college level. Mm. Who knew? Yeah. And um, really, really enjoyed his time on Little House. And there's some lovely behind yeah. the scenes I, And he's going to be with yeah, us for one right day back. this weekend at Simi Valley. Oh, oh great, great. Oh, good. Yeah. He's got to yeah. come when, back. He's, he's when, the uh, holler. When, yeah, he had some great stories when I was interviewing him as well. If people want to check that out, go to the website, Living on a Prairie TV. Um, yeah, he was great. Okay, that's it for today. We, we're, we, we are out of time, everybody. This always goes way too fast. It's too much fun. Um, you are listening to the Little House 50 for 50 podcast. We are out there on all the socials. Uh, you can find us on YouTube and our website, too. The name everywhere is Little House 50 podcast. And, um, oh, I always forget to say this, but 
and it feels icky saying this, but here mm. we go. Mm. Like and subscribe, please. Like and subscribe. Oh, like and subscribe. If you like sure. and subscribe, then more people will just dis will discover us. So it's really not an ego thing. It's just to spread the love, everybody. <laughs> For more information about the Little House on the Prairie 50th Anniversary Castrine and Festival, please go to littlehousefestival.com. It was so great to have Wendy Lou Lee here today. And we'll see everybody uh, this weekend at the Simi Valley Festival. Crazy! It's here! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. See you next we'll time. See you next time. Oh! Let's fly. Let's fly. Freeze frame. <laughs>